The movie begins with a spy in a simulation for a rescue mission. He takes down multiple enemies, but is caught off guard by a woman that is his objective to rescue as she stabs him. He loses this simulation, and his superior orders James Bond to go to a health facility to help him be in the best shape possible for his next missions. But the following night, he notices a nurse and a man batting heads with each other. He proceeds to investigate it, and suddenly the squabbling stops, and the two commences an eye exercise for his artificial eye to infiltrate an American weapon facility. The next morning, Bond lifts some weight at the facility, and suddenly, a man attacks him from behind. As that man intends to kill Bond, the scuffle results in lots of damage to the medical facility's properties, and eventually, the man accidentally dies. Later that day, Bond's superior calls him at his office to suspend him after causing damage in the facility, rather than getting in shape and becoming a better spy. At the military base, the man with the artificial eye sneaks into the American weapon facility and hacks two nuclear dummy warheads. He leaves as soon as he finishes hacking the nuclear weapons. But as soon as he leaves, a woman suddenly attacks his car and throws a bomb to blow it up, killing the man inside his car and disposing any witnesses that may testify for stealing the nuclear weapons. As the nuclear weapons are in the possession of the terrorist group Spectre, their leader anonymously calls the world leaders during their meeting. He claims that they now hold two nuclear weapons that they can deploy any time if they do not agree with their terms to give the 25% of every annual oil income to their organization. The following day, Bond's superior calls him to give him his next mission. They command him to investigate the whereabouts and locations of the nuclear weapons that are currently in the hands of Spectre. Bond then leaves and goes to the weaponry to restock his weapons for this new mission. The team detects the Spectre at the shores of the Bahamas, where Bond will be investigating for the next few days. He flirts with a local fisherwoman that is preparing for her trip at the sea. He then meets with this fellow agent named Nigel, aid him in his mission. Nigel fills up the details to Bond to where the Spectre's exact location may be. Nigel also requests that Bond keep a low profile while in the Bahamas so they don't alert the Spectre. Bond goes to a bar to ask the locals about the boat of the Spectre named Flying Saucer. One person knows that the boat has already sailed that morning, but does not know the reason why. He then meets Fatima Blush, an expert of the seas of Nassau, also the woman we see at the military base earlier. Fatima suggests that she accompanies him to the reef, as she may help Bond find what he's looking for. They board a large boat and prepare for diving at the reef. Bond and Fatima exchange spits and wrestles at the bed before wearing a diving suit in preparation for diving the reef. They both submerge at the reef, but Fatima puts a tracker on Bond's oxygen tank that alerts the nearby great white shark. Bond tries to fend off the shark by grabbing an old oxygen tank at the sunken boat, but it keeps on tracking him due to the sound on his tracker that alerts more sharks from the reef. He quickly cuts a pole off the sunken boat to trap the shark. Shortly after, a shark accidentally cuts his oxygen tank hose, but he grabs the tank and takes enough oxygen that allows him to breathe for a short amount of time. He then looks up and notices that there is a fishing bait near his location. He swiftly grabs it to escape further harm below the reef. The fisherwoman lifts her fishing rod as she feels a heavy weight in her bait. But to her surprise, it is Bond, the man that flirts with her before her fishing trip. They go back to their hotel rooms after joining a festival nearby. Fatima spots and attempts to assassinate Bond once more. She plants a bomb on his bed. Nigel calls Bond as he figures out that the boat of Spectre is following a route to the south of France. He invites Bond to a snorkeling for tomorrow. Bond accepts his invitation and drops the call. But fortunately, Bond is in the room of the fisherwoman as Fatima blows the room into pieces. Bond arrives at France's airport where Felix and Nicole, two of his fellow agents, accompany him for his mission. They fill him with information and the location of Largo. They soon leave and drive to a villa where they can freely stalk Largo and his boat flying saucer. Bond and Felix notice Domino, the girlfriend of Largo. They plan to stalk her to gather more information about Largo and the nuclear weapons. 
Bond disguises himself as a massage therapist in a local spa, where Domino is getting a treatment. He massages her into talking about a charity ball, with the funding of Largo, into helping many children. He notices that a staff member is coming his way. He leaves the spa to avoid getting caught. Later that night, Bond arrives at the casino for the charity ball. He surveys the area for Domino, and as soon as he finds her, he approaches her and explains that he is not really a therapist and offers her a drink. But Largo notices Domino talking to Bond. Largo invites Bond to play a game of stakes, but Futuristic has more repercussions as they progress. Largo puts money at stake to whoever loses. Largo eventually loses to Bond. Bond will not accept the money, but in return, he asks for a dance with Domino. Largo approves and Bond waltzes with Domino on the dance floor. While they're dancing, he informs Domino that his brother is killed by Largo, but intends to hide it from her. But Largo interrupts them to ask for a lunch invitation tomorrow. Bond accepts, and they all take their leave. As Bond goes home, he notices that there is someone inside the villa. He surveys the area and finds out that Nicole is already dead. He then spots Fatima leaving with the car. Bond swiftly gets his motorcycle at the garage to chase her. An intense chase occurs until they arrive at a trap in a tunnel, where Fatima's goons are waiting to trap Bond and capture him. He escapes the trap, and Fatima follows and plans to recapture him. In another tunnel, Bond gets hit by a wooden plank, making him fall on his motorcycle. Fatima attacks him and makes him beg for salvation, but Bond uses his ball pin missile to blow up Fatima. Felix arrives and helps Bond escape the commotion as they disguise themselves as boxers preparing for a fight. The following day, Bond and Felix submerge at the reef below the flying saucer. The entrance below opens, but only Bond is able to enter as it closes immediately after leaving Felix outside. A butler welcomes Bond as Largo is expecting him to arrive for lunch. Largo then tours Bond to the flying saucer and tells him to wait up until 12 p.m. for their lunch. Domino spots Bond and asks to meet at the ballet room to talk. Bond and Domino form a team to defeat and take revenge on Largo. They create a diversion for Bond to send their location to their headquarters. The diversion is successful, but their headquarters cannot fully detect the exact location of Bond. As soon as the boat arrives at a Middle Eastern themed place where Largo traps Bond and Domino to avoid them taking action to stop his plans. He claims Bond and leaves Domino in a pole, but Bond escapes with the use of his laser watch and rescues Domino from a bunch of bandits. He grabs a horse to escape with her as they trap all the bandits before they jump in the ocean. An inflatable boat and a submarine arrives to rescue them, and Bond informs them the locations of one of the two nuclear bombs. The bomb squad successfully disarms the bomb at Washington, D.C. to stop the nuclear bomb's explosion but Bond only has five hours to find the remaining nuclear bomb before it explodes. Bond and his team survey the north of Africa as it is the expected location of the remaining bomb. They use a pennant called Tears of Allah that was previously given to Domino to pinpoint the exact location of Largo and his crew. They find out that there's an underwater area that Largo may be hiding the bomb. The radar spots multiple underwater activity in the area Bond asks for Prototype XT-7B, a flight machine to make them arrive at the location of Largo faster. Bond and Felix use the XT-7B to fly and then submerge at the location after reaching the surface of the location. Largo and his crew arrives at an underwater temple where they carry the last bomb. While Bond and Felix are searching for the entrance of the temple, Largo's crew carefully carries the bomb in a mechanical equipment. Bond and Felix find the cave and rush inside. They split up to take down Largo's crew. Reinforcements arrive from Bond's team, and they now outnumber Largo's crew. Largo and a scientist enable the nuclear bomb and bring it underground with them. They blow up the exit of the temple so no one can follow their trail. But Bond has different plans. He requests for a helicopter to chase Largo and the bomb to stop the detonation. He finds a well that is connected to the temple and he drops into it. Largo surprises Bond as they fight each other to obtain the nuclear bomb. Bond traps Largo using the nuclear bomb and he attempts to detonate it, 
Largo tries to shoot Bond with the harpoon, but Domino and his crew arrive to stop him. The detonation and the attempt to save the world is successful. The movie ends by Bond and Domino swimming in their private pool, but Bond hears someone enter the gate and he checks it. He grabs the person and pushes him to the pool, but to his surprise, it is just Nigel asking Bond to get back to service and save the world again. Like and subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.